Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Glenda Plays, and I'm going to be reviewing Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart on the PlayStation 5 by Insomniac Games. So Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is the latest installment in the series um, from Insomniac Games. The story kicks off with Doctor Nefarious attempting to steal the Dimensionator from Clank. Ratchet and Clank have to fight him off, um, but unfortunately during the fight, the Dimensionator breaks and tears the universe apart and Ratchet and Clank are teleported to a different dimension. And in this dimension, Dr. Nefarious is always successful in his campaign to take over the world. So after the Dimensionator breaks, this is where Ratchet finds himself. No Clank to be seen of, um, and he's been teleported to this new city that he doesn't know anything about. I'm playing on the ray tracing performance mode and um, there is another two modes that you can use or select um, which is performance mode without ray tracing which will give you 60 frames per second and the fidelity mode which will give you 30 frames a second. You can also select um, the 120Hz refresh rate if you have a TV or a monitor that's capable of doing those types of refresh rates. I have got that enabled just now. So Insomniac Games has done a fantastic job the graphics in this game. As you can see there's lots of reflections and lots and lots of kind of good shadows with regards to where the light's coming from and things like that. They have also done a really good job of making the environments feel very full. So with a recent update to the game, Insomniac has introduced ray tracing into Ratchet & Clank and you can see on the screen that the ray tracing is really good. You can see in the puddle the robots are being re reflected in the puddle and as that one robot moves over the puddle you'll see the reflection moving with it and in turn when I'm walking past the puddle you'll see that the reflection changes based on my point of view as well which I felt was really good and it also helped immerse me. And with the PS5's hardware, um, mainly the SSD, the loading times are next to nothing. Um, moving between worlds in your spaceship takes no time at all. And just for another example of the lighting uh, and the general environment improvements that Insomniac have made, uh, this is like a, a hub within uh, Ratchet & Clank's world, so the, the dimension that they've been transported to. You can see that everything's kind of working by itself and all the lighting and shadows are all working based on the character's movements and things like that and based on where the lighting is coming from. So the gameplay has been improved quite dramatically uh, and Rift Apart. You've still got the same kind of wacky weapons that you get, but the the use of them is amazing. Um, the way most of them have been kind of improved upon in terms of how they look. Um, but there's also quite a lot of um, upgrades towards mobility in terms of the phase dodge that you can do and the the boots, the hover boots that you've got as well, that enable you to move about the environment faster while you're trying to fight. You can also um, run across walls now um, and there's always the, the classic double jump as well. As well as that there is also the, the rift pulls that you can do to instantly transport yourself to another part of the map which is fantastic. The, the classic grind boots that you get in all of the Ratchet & Clank games. Um, I've always enjoyed these set pieces that they've made. Um, they've always been quite enjoyable for me and um, they are kind of a staple of Ratchet and Clank games, it wouldn't be the same without them. Um, in terms of the rift pulling, which is probably the biggest change that they've made and quite groundbreaking that they've managed to introduce a, a mechanic like that and it does kind of change the way you fight in the, the world where you can kind of quickly nip between one side of the map to the other um, and get a flank on an, en an enemy or just move to a safer part if you need to change guns or anything like that as well. And in terms of weaponry, there is a huge range, uh, range of weapons that you can choose from. 
Um, like most Ratchet and Clank games, there is um, the shop that you can you exchange your bolts for that you collect by killing enemies, destroying boxes, etc. Um, there is also a um, element that you need to upgrade your weapons called Raritarium, um, and you can collect that throughout the world. Um, I found that I didn't ever really need to grind this out, it was always just there and available for me whenever I wanted to upgrade a weapon that I found that was uh, handy or useful. I did find myself having to switch between weapons quite a lot to deal with certain en enemy types and things, so make sure to switch it up and try all the weapons that you've got available to you. Insomniac has also integrated the use of the DualSense controller um, where you can get the haptic feedback um, from the controller and the adaptive triggers also work when you're trying to squeeze a gun so there's two different uh, ways you can do it. You can get the feedback while you're like, shooting a gun you'll feel the feedback through the controller um, but there's also some guns that you can go halfway and then full way to decide what type of shot you're doing. So to summarise, I would say that Insomniac have done a fantastic job um, with the, the latest introduction of Ratchet & Clank games. They have introduced a photo mode as well, which is what you're seeing just now. And just to highlight the, the detail that they've went into, look at Clank's eyes and Ratchet's armour. That's how much detail they've put into this. Um, if you were to look at the 2016 game, you wouldn't see anything like that. The loading time's are amazing, the gameplay's fantastic, the movement set that they've introduced with the hover boots and other creatures that you can ride and fly on is just fantastic. It felt a lot more fast paced than other games that I've played from the Ratchet and Clank series. Um, in terms of platinum trophies, it's 4 out of 10 in terms of difficulty. Um, it does require a second playthrough to get the full platinum trophy but there's no missable trophies and nothing that you really need to grind out either. For me I would give this game a, a solid 9 out of 10. Um, if you're a PlayStation 5 owner there is a limited amount of games so I'd definitely recommend checking this one out. As always guys thanks for coming along and checking out the channel. Um, I will be doing more reviews of Forbidden West and Elden Ring when they come out. I'll also be trying to do a Let's Play for the first time, so be sure to check me out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been Glenda Plays. Thanks for watching. Keep on playing.